All right, hello, session five for uh, EDAS 6820, Special Education Law. Um, the reading for this session was focusing in on the Yale uh, Special Ed Law book, Chapter 8. Also had on there the Ohio uh, Special Education Regulations for FAPE, uh, Rule 2-2 uh, two is the FAPE rules. And we're actually, uh, I'm actually going to move that to... Uh, our discussion for Wednesday to look a little bit farther. So we're going to look on Wednesday in our face-to-face -face session. Uh, we'll look at the uh, Ohio new Ohio rule that just went into effect on July 1, as well as the accommodations manual uh, as our pieces that we'll look at on for that class. So we're just going to look at the the Yell chapter on FAPE, and uh, again, it's a it's a lot of information, but I think I can get through all of it within this presentation and um, really uh, move us forward. So, um, so chapter eight, uh, free and appropriate public education or FAPE. Um, what I'm going to focus in on are the, the areas that define the mandate within IDEA. Uh, what are the components? How do we break those things down? Um, this notion of related services and free and appropriate edu public education. Um, litigation, that some key litigation pieces that have occurred around FAPE. Uh, issues of educational methodology and school placement. And then also we'll talk a little bit about graduation and its impact on issues of FAPE. So, the definition uh, within IDEA for FAPE is that a free appropriate public education uh, is provided at public expense. Uh, it meets the standards of the state education agency. Um, this would mean the rules and regulations established by the state. Uh, it includes preschool, elementary, and secondary school, and it conforms to the student's IEP. So it is vague on purpose. Um, Congress understands, understood when they created uh, IDEA, um, and the courts have maintained this notion that the purpose and goal of the law is to create individualized programs. So the appropriateness for each individual child is determined based on the needs of each individual child. So there is no clear, broad definition of what FAPE is. It is simply, it is vague on purpose. But as a result, there's procedural requirements that um, the, the, the law does make sure is very clear. And those, we have to notify parents about any meetings that are occur regarding their child and their special education program, to invite parents to participate in all of our meetings. Um, we have to receive parental consent before we evaluate a child as well as before we make a placement. Uh, if parents don't agree with the with a the placement, there's procedures that, that will happen on that. But the law requires that we seek that consent uh, before we make any moves. Um, obviously, parents have to have access to all the educational records. Um, this would be anything in the child's file. And remember, that may sound a little strange now, but remember, uh, this was first drafted in the 70s, and that was before things like um, educational records, privacy acts, and who defining what are records and all those kinds of things. So, so you know, it's got some history behind it. And then um, Another procedural requirement, if we do an evaluation and we determine that we recommend a placement, we being the school, recommend a placement, then, um, and the parents disagree with that, the law is very, very clear that the parents are allowed to seek out a third party uh, evaluator um, and that the school, that the public, will pay for that. All right, so the components... Um, within um, this notion of FAPE is, you know, again, those four that were listed on the previous slide at the top. Free, but it's only in one direction. It's free to the family, right? Um, the school's cost cannot be a determining factor in whether uh, something is, is appropriate or not, uh, but it, what we know is that the only thing that parents can be charged for are the same kinds of things that we would charge 
uh, non-disabled parents for. So if the reading class is a workbook and we charge the parents for the purchase of the workbook for um, non-disabled students, we are allowed to charge that same fee to disabled families. Uh, we simply can't uh, have anything that would be related to their special education program, right? their unique individualized program. State standards, uh, the book outlines that there are a few states that have higher standards in particular elements beyond what Congress has established. So in order for those schools to provide FAPE in those states, they have to um, meet those higher standards. Ohio was not listed in the text uh, with any of those at, at, at the time that the text was written. Obviously, we have brand new rules, which we've, which, you know, I don't know that any of us have necessarily gone all the way through yet to understand their particular implications or whether any of them increase the standards or not. Appropriate education, uh, the Congress has been clear, the courts have also been clear that it's not a guarantee of success in schools. We're supposed to outline goals. It's not that the goals have to be met, the goals have to be appropriate and we have to make uh, good faith effort and appropriate movement towards meeting those goals, but there's no guarantees uh, within that. And then um, parent participation, uh, it is a legal right of the parents to participate in the education, in the development of the student's special education program, and we also know that it's educationally sound. Uh, you know, the book notes again that we know that when parents are uh, tightly linked to their child's education programming, the child's success is higher. So it, it makes sense for us to engage with families that way. All right, um, next. So related services. These are the additional services that are, that, that are required in order for a student to benefit from the special education services. So um, transportation is one real clear uh, related service. Um, so we have a wheel bound chair uh, child. Uh, we need to make available to them a wheel, wheelchair accessible uh, school bus, provide them transportation service to be able to get to school. Um, when I had students who participated in uh, career centers, um, in our district, our career center was in a different district, right? So they had to they had to uh, go to that district. If uh, we were not required to provide transportation, but when we had a special education student that was participating at the career center, we did offer the opportunity for transportation because that was part of their education plan was for them to seek career this career education that required them to change buildings that meant we needed to make sure that we provided and offer transportation. And if I had a bus going, I would let gen ed kids ride. Um, but if in the event that there was a period of time in which um, there were no special education children attending the career center, and there, or uh, none of them were making use of the transportation made available, I would not offer transportation to my gen ed students. All right? That's, uh, now, Conversely, I worked in a different district in which we provide transportation for everybody because the career center was so far away, it uh, made more sense for us to just send a bus every day. So we did that. Um, but one of the places of, the, of, of related services is also this notion of school health services, access to a school nurse. And uh, the book went through a lot of uh, the, the language around Tatro, which is the, the case that is helping draw the line between medical services and school health services. In medical services, we are not required to provide, but school health services, we are required to provide. All right. So where is this line that, that separates them? And really, ultimately, it, it kind of comes down to this notion of, um, does it require a licensed physician to conduct the work. If not, uh, schools are going to be responsible for it. So this was a situation uh, with, with um, 
the use of a catheters of catheterizing a, a child. Uh, what we did see though is that um, when there were multiple, maybe as individual steps, they weren't deemed medical processes, but when there are multiples of them and they add up to this very complicated set of services, that those can be, the courts have defined those kinds of level of service as a medical service, and so the school's not responsible for it. That was the case with the child who ended up with, essentially, uh, the, uh, the family was providing nursing services, one-on-one -on -one nursing services for the child. Um, and that was not considered a related service, right? So we provide related services to ensure that they can benefit, that the child can benefit from the program, right? So again, uh, getting them to school or uh, oftentimes it may be technology pieces as related services. Um, for example, use of a uh, computer, now it's a lot. We see a lot of iPad things. Uh, we were we were playing around, and the technology have gotten a lot better around uh, voice voice to text or text to voice uh, kinds of technologies to help uh, students be able to access the education. Those would be related services separate from their actual educational plan. All right, next, and I'm not moving nearly fast enough here. So. The big piece on FAPE litigation was the Raleigh case, and um, essentially the question was, does FAPE require that the schools provide all available services, right? And the court was, the Supreme Court and Justice Rehnquist in his, de in his decision, uh, which was a majority decision, it was not a unanimous decision, uh, said no, that's not required. So, but the court did help develop what's known as the Raleigh test, and there are two particular pieces that we can look at. Uh, were the procedures of the act followed? And if they were followed, is the educational program reasonably calculated to enable the, the child to receive an educational benefit? So the, 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 the educational services have to be more than trivial. They have to lead to that there's some benefit, but we don't have to maximize that benefit, and we don't have to maximize um, the, the requirements, uh, the pieces there. Um, all right, so methodology and placement. For the most part, the courts have stayed out of educational method. Uh, there are a few exceptions. The Lovis um, therapy for autistic children is one that the courts have said, no, this is one that you ought to be, able, you ought to be providing. Extended school year, um, it's only required to prevent substantial regression. Right, so it's not about moving a kid, continuing to move a kid forward over the summer. It's that that break in summer causes such a level of regression that the student then is almost starting back from loses almost the entire school year. So that it's necessary to extend the school year. And uh, the key piece on placement is that placement has to occur post the development of the IEP. So we decide what the what the appropriate education program is going to look like then we make decisions about where it's going to occur. And we're going to talk a lot, chapter 11 is all about least restrictive environment, so we'll spend a lot more time talking about placement at that time. All right, last little slide here is about graduation. So FAPE ends in one of two spots. One spot is when they age out of IDEA, out of the jurisdiction of the law, which is age 21, typically. Uh, that definition, some, some states have it defined as uh, on the 21st birthday, others have it on the 22nd birthday. So how we define who's 21 is varies from state to state, believe it or not. But it's generally this notion of being 21 and uh, or graduates with an academic diploma. Certificate of completion, um, special ed diploma, um, special ed recognition, uh, all of those things don't eliminate sever services. Now the IEP team can decide to sever services at, at that point, but for the most part, uh, those extend. And actually, um, we're going to talk in the discussion board. I would like to hear uh, from you what you know your district is doing for 18 to 21 year olds. All right. Have a great day, and we will see you next Wednesday.